Okay, so uh, if somewhere recording gets disrupted, please do let me know so that I can look into that technical issue. Yeah. So sure. Yeah. Thank you. So meanwhile, we'll start with the session. The topic for today is about the research and research techniques and other things. So I think uh, in one of my sessions, I always tell people that whenever you start researching, do not research in Google. I'll tell you why. So what happens is there will be many blog writers. There will be many people who will be writing their uh, case analysis or uh, they would be publishing materials online. And uh, uh, because we advocates are not allowed to do the front marketing. So every advocate follow, follows a different path. That is writing articles, publications, doing that, doing this, so that he, he makes a brand name of himself. In this objective, it is like we can find a lot of articles in the Google. And all of them may not be correct. There may be some error in interpretation. Like the way you read a sentence and the way I read a sentence would be different. And the way the judge has written that, it would be a total different thing. Now, it is like, see, if somebody messages you, hey, you can read it a thousand ways. It will like very politely he's telling hey or it will like very roughly he wants to just just start a fight with you and he's like hey it it will all depend on the uh, mood of the reader like what is my mood currently if i am already tensed and if i know that i have done something which might trigger that person then if that person calls and he's like hello then i would like yes there is something going on Okay, the same thing happens with uh, with me and my mom too. If I know I have done something which might uh, uh, trigger her or for which she'll be angry on me, the moment she calls, I'll uh, I'll uh, wait for a second and I'll like, how is she telling hello? How is her tone? Though she might have sounded very normal, I'm like, why why are you so different? What happened? And she'll be like, yeah, why are you asking this? What did you do? That, that thing happens the same way with our professional life too there may be some errors and also many a time what many people feel is sections are not necessary we need uh, not right sections it is the provisions that is important etc etc and also you might have seen that Many people, uh, while it may be in an Instagram post or it may be in any post for that matter, they would not be telling the case name. What is the case name? They would be like in a leading case in a, 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 in a leading case decided by Madras High Court. So this is like uh, the, even the newspaper articles too. They will not be publishing the name of the particular case they would be like in a air they will tell that in a leading case or in a famous case or this particular judge has done that now when you're doing a legal research it will not serve your purpose you cannot go and tell in front of the judge that uh honorable uh, my lord or what whatever uh, you do the salutation as that in a leading case this is this is decided by madras high court he'll be like okay what is the case give me the case citation give me the case order uh, give me the judgment copy that that's what they will tell now so you cannot rely totally on the information that you get in the google so if not Google, where to go? If not Google, you have to go to scholar.google.com. This is a very reliable uh, website or a very reliable search engine wherein you can find only authentic uh, information. And to be listed in Google Scholar also, they have to go through various procedures. They have to establish their credentiality. It, it is something like the verified profile okay so in this world of social media you can see that blue tick okay what does that blue tick mean that means it is the verified profile and it belongs to him only okay the same way this google scholar is also kind of verified thing that yes this is for this person now if i uh, want to search anything i can search here the same way as i search in google like now i want to search on uh, employment Okay, uh, employment law. Okay, so here you can see I have found books, I have articles, 
see here it is showing the showing the suggestions also yeah so uh, he in online many many websites i can find here a theory of fair employment laws etc etc now here we will get one more twist the one more twist is we will not have access for all the journals uh, need not necessary that all of it are paid you can find many free books also over here so you can uh, use that or sometimes it is something which is paid in something uh, there are some accounts which just requires a creation of account in their website and they will give you free access now here you can see that this is showing for purchase access so what here we can do is so this is the book by uh, oh okay so we'll go back what we will do is we'll just copy this and then uh, we will search in google for this okay so here you can find the pdf it is loading once again yeah so you can find the entire journal of 81 pages here okay so what i am telling you here is find the uh, uh, book or find the journal that you want in the google scholar and you can access it if you are not able to access it like it is asking for membership or something like that then you can try in the normal google and there you can definitely find the free version of it okay so here you can see that this 81 page entire document is available for your study so this way what you can do is you can avoid all the blogs i do have a great respect for blog writer and even i write blogs newsletters everything i do that but in spite of that what i am telling is all the things that are available in the internet will not be true and correct and it requires a cross verification see at the end of the day we are all humans even might i might have done some error in when i write blogs or newsletters or something like that so it is always uh, suggested to go to these websites and from there get the authentic information and then you look uh, for the same piece of information in the google so that you can get this okay so this way you can increase your uh, 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 the quality of the research work that you have put in and also your burden will come down because they will have the footnotes everything see here also you can see that the footnotes are all there so if you want to take it get inspired from it write it then you have the ready made food noted all that you have to do is you have to just copy and paste and this is also in the uh, uh, extract table this thing and this is not even content protected so this is very easier for you this will make your research work like cake work or something that you would really love to okay so and also here also you have this option so here you can go and click on the site okay so here yes so you have this mla apa chicago harvard vanguard you have to just click on this and then this is already copied you have to paste it in the uh, word file that you are working so this way you can reduce your burden a lot and that's the first thing and second thing keywords while searching for any of the content or any of the research work keywords play a important role like how do you search like you cannot uh, do a random search or something like that always use these drop downs whatever they suggest see here they have labor employment law workplace employment law dismissal employment law uh, human resource test irish and also here you can also see certain suggestions okay so these suggestions are like uh they would uh, be sometimes it, it is a mixture of both the customized one and also the uh, trending one okay so on on uh, it will also analyze your previous search histories like how you have searched what are the profiles that you have visited so it is something 
which is a ai based and it will give you certain good recommendation so always look look out for the suggestions that google is giving you you may find it useful uh, if you are not so good with the keywords okay that that plays a very important role this is the first thing that i wanted to tell about the google scholar and the other one we have is google books i don't know how many of you have used this google books so this is books.google.co.in this is also like google scholar where you can find books you can find a lot of paid uh, paid books also free books or books with limited access wherein it will be like 50% of the book will be free and 50% of the book will be uh, uh paid something like that so here you can see uh, taxman's new labor and industrial laws uh industrial relations and labor law sixth edition okay so you can uh, find so many books see here this is preview so that means that you can see only a certain part of the book uh and more editions preview okay so here we have read let us have a look at it if uh, the entire book is available now this is again five pages they have given uh, a preview of five pages so if you feel that yes contents are already there or sometimes it is like you are looking to uh, uh, for the literature review okay so you want to write something in your research dissertation or hypothesis about that particular book see all of it is an it is an like i could tell that it is an uh, uh, open life uh, that we write in dissertations that we have referred these many books which we would not have so you uh, these these things you will help you to write a good uh, uh, literature review or even if you want to write any uh, footnotes or something like that okay and also you can find many uh, free books here okay so this is with the uh, uh, preview of uh, five pages and uh, you you can get free i'm not going to uh, getting very deep into this because it is like uh, you can refer the free books that whichever you want so this is again uh, google.books.co.in and uh, keep this also as a handy thing so that you can refer to books in the real time and also it will help you in writing footnotes in writing uh, uh your bibliography or your literature review and many many other things so yeah that is the second thing i want to discuss and third thing is relying on authentic sources okay so whenever you research i suppose you are researching something related to a state government laws or country laws ensure that you visit their official website okay now see now i wanted to study about uh, citizenship of canada like uh, how do i get citizenship in canada so i have searched it as conditions for canadian citizenship so now here you can see that i have got this canada.ca so that means that yes this is the government website need not necessary that the government website has to be on top the people who are very good at the uh, or what i could say uh the seo and uh, all all other things they would get their websites at the top do not be under an impression that if something is not in the first page of the web of the google search it does not mean that that does not exist in the google okay you can go to here i will show you you can go to 10 10 plus pages you have so many uh these things and always uh, look out for second page third page fourth page also because trust me there would be very 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 good content in those page number see whatever lands in the page first need not necessary that it is the most reliable or it is the most famous one or it is most read by people it is the visitors count etc etc no they land in the first page primarily because of very good search engine optimization that is seo they know how to use the keywords they know how to build the websites they know they know each and everything out of it that is the reason why they land in the first page and second thing is they would 
uh, been uh, giving a, a sponsored Google Ads. So if you search something, you will find some content as sponsored here. So if you find that content as sponsored, then it is the ad that is popping up, not the actual content. They are promoting the website. I mean, that's the uh, advertisement that has come in. You have to even look at that factor. Now, when you order in Amazon also, uh, if you search like blue crop top, you will find many, to many tops at the top, like Amazon suggested or uh, sponsored, something like that. That means that they are doing some activities. They are doing some paid promotion. That is why they are in the top. So you have to look at it and you have to take a call whether you have to visit their website or not visit their website. Okay, and moving further, so here you can see this is uh, visaplace.com. So this is something uh, agency who is doing the uh, visa service in Canada. They have put up this write up. And again, we can see that visa guide. Okay, so this is again people who are providing visa, canadianvisa.com. Uh, Lemor Law. This is some uh, maybe some uh, a law firm who are providing the PR citizen, PR or citizenship, and then Wikipedia. Never ever rely on the Wikipedia information that you get. The reason behind that is, see, Wikipedia is something which is editable by all. Even if I want to edit today, or if you want to edit today. All you have to do is go to Wikipedia, create your account, and edit as much as you can or whatever you want. Therefore, never ever rely on the information that you get in Wikipedia. You can use it for reference purpose, or you can even use the images that is available provided you cross verify. And whenever you write an article, dissertation, thesis, whatever you write, never ever quote wikipedia as the source wikipedia is never the source of information it is just for our uh, curious minds to look into what it is how it is and all of those things but never ever consider wikipedia as a source of information and then we have the visa.ca again this is some visa thing and we have cic news some news channel so we land up here this is Again, uh, uh, the Canadian uh, government, government of Canada. So here you can see apply for citizenship, who can apply, all of these things. They have given all the details. And now it is understood that this is one of the authentic information. So whenever you take information from Google, ensure that you visit the authentic government website. Now I'll show you one more example file online rti so now i will search file online rti okay so here you get this rti.gov.n so now this is gov.n that means that it is the authentic website okay that is the authentic government website because it has that particular extension either it has to be dot gov.n dot nic dot n something like that okay now you can see this file rti online suchna ki adhikar filing rti across india now here you can see file rti online dot in so that means that this is not the official site for filing the rti they are like they are acting as the mediators and we have next RTI, uh, online rti online erti.com okay again this is not this and now see rti online dot up dot gov dot n so this is the government website okay because it has up dot gov dot n and then file your rti application online india dot gov dot n rti uh, system rti online dot delhi dot gov dot n so this way you can understand which one is the government website and which one is the uh, your uh, non-government website or which one is by certain individual or certain company so here they are not doing anything wrong they are just facilitating the people to file the rti that's a part of their business and they are doing it it is never an illegal thing but 
when you do research or when you provide an information that uh, you have to file RTI through this website, ensure that you quote the correct website. Okay, let me elaborate this point. Now you are writing an article on right to information and you want to write that how to file an RTI application online. So now when you write that particular article, you have to mention the website address. So over there, you should be very careful that you are mentioning the correct websites. Now, there may be some write-up by different person promoting this particular website. OK, so they, they would be promoting it. Yeah, please go to them. They would be uh, giving good information. You can approach them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So over there, if you are referring it, you will just copy and paste it that you can file RTI here. This is the authentic information. There you will be providing the misleading information and the credibility of your research work would be impacted. Therefore, it is very important that you know what is the website, what is the government website, what is a uh, non-government website, and how to differentiate between both of these things. Okay, and when you refer to the uh, state legislations or when you refer to judgments or whatever it is, do not refer to the uh, case comments. You can see that in many uh, websites that uh, they provide the case site, uh, the case uh, comments. What they do is like they will be like they will be simplifying the case, they will be writing the facts, they will be writing the judgments. It is no way wrong. They are doing their work. And it is one way facilitating us too. But when you are doing any research or something like that, then do not totally rely on such websites because they might have um, missed a certain thing or they might have felt that this is not an important thing. So now when you are reducing the 100 page judgment or not why so go, why go so far, uh, I will take a 25 page judgment. If you uh, reduce 25 page judgment into one or two page, it is definite that you have to you have to omit certain parts. You have to miss certain things. You have to uh, prioritize certain facts and and deprioritize certain things and also the findings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But who knows? See, when we do research, it may be for our case presentation also, a case argument also. The thing what I felt is of least important in a case may be of highest importance in your case. You, you never know that. Maybe the observation that was done by the judge would have been something very much uh, unique to your case or uh, not a unique thing to your case. It, it can be uh, the either of the ways. So for that, with that objective, you have to read the judgment as a whole and not read the case commentaries or case digests or uh, uh, some articles on that. If you are reading it for knowledge purpose, then it is OK. I really appreciate it because uh, uh, to gain knowledge and that too, like very quickly or uh, to uh, make it like a little smoother, it is, it is facilitating a lot. But when there is the word research comes in and you have to uh, write an article or you have to write a uh, write-up or something like that, then it is a big no from me. I always suggest you to read the entire uh, case judgment, uh, however lengthy page it is, so that it could facilitate your uh, uh, research work or uh, it could facilitate the objective with which you are doing. Yeah, so that, that's the one thing. And uh, the next one is, here I have taken uh, an article from the website uh, uh, Manupatra. So all of us know that this is one of the uh, most uh, reliable websites that one can have access to and all other things. So I have uh, taken one that is um, offense of criminal conspiracy. <laughs> Yeah, can you please unmute? Yeah. Okay. So here uh, I have taken this because I wanted to show you how it looks like how the uh, um, the uh, outer skeleton of a research work has to be. The first one is um, you have to know what you are going to write. 
you have to have a blueprint and then there should be parts like here you can see that we have this introduction part so what do you mean by conspiracy okay so let us uh, in interpret this how he has how wonderfully he has uh, skeleton this so offense of criminal conspiracy under indian criminal law so it has to definitely start with what do you mean by conspiracy so this is the main here this is the main hero or the main character of this article okay so see when you always in all the movies that you see hero or heroine will have a very dramatic entry like if it is heroine her hair will be flying in the air and she will be like like that like this and if it is a hero then he would be like coming in car or bike or in a fight sequence something like that there will be a very uh, uh, enthusiastic or energetic entry of the hero or heroine or the, or the main lead of the movie the same way here also in the article you have to give a big or banging entry to the main terminology that we are going to use in that particular article around which the article revolves so here the article revolves around offense of criminal conspiracy more specifically criminal conspiracy so it is definitely a mandate that you have to define what is criminal conspiracy in the first part so if a person who does not know what do you mean by criminal conspiracy if you tell him everything about that then he will be like oh what do you mean by criminal conspiracy that will not serve the purpose of the article right even a layman has to understand what is written in that particular article so you have to definitely start with explaining what do you mean by criminal conspiracy so moving further he has mentioned about the definition as per indian penal code and the uh, uh, the uh, essential ingredients now again here uh, i have been uh, uh, looking at this article on the perspective of research i have an objection here yes baba you have written that the definition of indian consp uh, criminal conspiracy is under indian penal code 1860 but which section of ipc right so i you cannot just randomly suppose you are doing this research uh, for one of your case and you have to do the case presentation now you cannot go and tell your judge that see sir uh, uh, see uh, malot uh, the uh, criminal conspiracy is defined under section uh, uh, defined under indian penal code 1860 and it has three main ingredients immediately the judge will ask you okay which section because he will also refer to those documents no so i will have an objection under this that why have you not mentioned the section okay so it is always uh, considerable to mention the specific section that which section is applicable so that the reader need not switch between the tabs go to the different tab and look for okay so which section of criminal uh, defines criminal conspiracy 120a and 120b i need not do that circles okay and next he has come to background or history that is a very uh, very wonderful thing that he has said uh, when uh, was this added okay so he has said that uh, it was not there in the original thing and etc etc and uh, it was made through an amendment in the year 1913 and here he has mentioned the sections that is section 120a and 120 d okay and uh, how it was accepted all of these things it is very wonderfully put up here in three paragraphs and then we have definition of criminal conspiracy wherein he has written about section 120a uh, section 43 120b and also he has differentiated uh, section 34 and 120a of ipc 1860 so how i how, how they are totally different and apart from that he has also relied on section 10 of indian evidence act 1872 that is because uh, 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 it speaks of the evidence that you have to produce before the honorable court while proving the criminal conspiracy this is also a very appreciable fact because while i'm if i'm doing research uh, for my case work 
okay so for some of my client for some of my case then i would be relying on section 10 of indian evidence act 1872 as well to know what evidence i should be submitting to the court following that he has written case laws that is also a very wonderful thing and uh, you can see the citation also in the end note okay so he has given the uh, reference number and that citation is in the end note here you can see that okay so you can see the citations and then followed by conclusion so this is a very a very short article but very very appreciable thing because everything related to criminal conspiracy is covered here so we know um, uh, if if there was a section here then this would have been a hundred out of hundred for me uh, because only reason is this is uh, there is no section here i would be giving 99.5 here not a hundred if I, it was only five zero point five for not mentioning section here i have to scroll down to find the section and people while doing research do not have that patience to look down whether it is written or not they would be like immediately switching the tab which i don't like personally so when i am reading something all my uh, curious things has to be answered in that particular article only and i know that's for many of others also because we don't like switching tabs especially if you are reading it in phone or something like that it, it's a big no it's always a big no to switch tabs in phone and if it is laptop then i think that that would be a debatable topic okay so here wonderfully he has put up this introduction what is criminal conspiracy ingredients history definition along with that relevant sections of ipc relevant sections of indian evidence act case laws and finally ended with the conclusion okay so whatever you write it has to be in this way so that it is uh, very clear and it is very concise and it is answering all the queries that are raised by you okay so if you want i can share this uh, uh, criminal conspiracy thing also uh, so that you can have a look at it and i believe they are fourth year students of uh, uh, university of lucknow okay and also they have mentioned the end notes okay so end notes are the one which you are going to write at the end of the articles uh, that is called as end note and now we have footnote footnote is wherein at the every page so here you can see one more article um, this is uh, why closed doors knock, uh, does namaste knock. So here you can see this is footnote. Okay, footnote means which is there in every page and end note means which is at the end of the uh, research work. Okay, so now here this is, this is end note as it is at the fag end and uh, this is footnote because this is at the every page okay so when they have posted it they have done it like this and this is again uh, indian law journal uh, so here he has written an article on which closed doors uh, does namaste knock okay so he has again uh, written the introduction see how beautifully he has paragraphed it and followed by legislative background a backdrop and uh, followed by assessment of the involved social component and working of this law. He has done an assessment and what is new in Namaste and way forward, how what is the future that we expect? And yes, so this is the research work that he has done. So he is again a student from Nalsar University, Hyderabad. Yeah, so this is the research work that you have to do. Okay, so this is not something I would not tell you that you have to be a, a national law student or or you have to be some reputed law college or you should be good at your English. No, need not necessary because these days we have so many uh, online learning platforms. We have so many free websites which give uh, access to the uh, writing skill to improve our writing skill to use uh, the appropriate words 
all of all of these things so we have to leverage such things like we have this uh, what is that grammarly quill boot and many other uh, websites which will uh, really help us to overcome it okay so though you are not so good at your language you feel somewhere no i don't think i can make an appealing sentence something like that you can use those uh, uh, those platforms uh, i'll show you this um, i don't know how many of you are using this so there is a website called as quillboard so you can see uh, my screen here you have um, you can use this as an extension too every time it shows but i don't use it as extension because that will uh, i i personally feel that i'll be used to it and uh, someday if i have to uh, work on somebody others laptop or if i have to write something in front of someone i would be so handicapped without quillboard or any other tools i only use it for my proofreading purposes and i suggest the same thing for you also do not get addicted or do not get used to these tools but yes use them limitedly okay so whatever you use it has to be in a limited scale you should not be used to it and you should not be totally dependent like it becomes a part of your thing it it, it should not be like that today we are living in a digital era but we never know what will happen tomorrow okay so see nobody had thought that we would be getting something like covid or etc 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 and see things things take a turn and things may take a turn any time and also you never know what situation you would be landing in tomorrow uh, some of your child will uh, come and ask you like in my school they have asked me to write an article please help me writing it or they want uh you to do it or there may be a competition wherein your kids ask you to write or even your sisters or siblings anyone ask you to write and then you should not be like oh i need quillbo to write i need google to write it it should not be like that wherein i was uh, uh looking in uh, uh in an um uh, insta reel uh, wherein uh, if i have that link i will share i i found it a very uh, uh, a kind of uh, very informative thing it's a, it's a very basic thing that fellow uh, he was newly appointed as the professor and um, uh, he was from some um, it was shown that he was some from uh, a very good college and other things and uh, he was supposed to teach he was supposed to take the first class he entered and he wanted to write professor that fellow while writing the word professor on the board he was like whether it is double f or single f what what after he wrote p r o f and he's like after the f is it e or is it double f he was so confused he was so confused and looking at that real i was like what is the spelling of professor it's p r o f f or p r o f e and then uh, a student she helped him she she was just trying yeah, she got to know that he is missing out the spelling and she helped him to write the word professor and uh, there there was a caption that uh, see however uh, uh, wherever you have studied and all of these things technologies are taking uh, are uh, reducing our skill reducing our intellect and uh, if there was an auto correct or if there was a suggestion something like that he would not have applied his mind to know what is the spelling of professor so he is so used to this uh, uh, tools uh, or the auto suggestions what your gmail or microsoft word gives like if you write p r o f it will understand that you are writing professor and it will auto suggest you all you have to do is just type the tab or just type the uh, space bar so your word is done so you need not think that what after p r o f it because it you assume that that's a work of google to think okay so it's the same way uh, we even we may land up in certain circumstances wherein we have, might have to write it a blackboard or we might we might have to write in a page so do not get used to these tools
that's a definite no do not add them as the uh, extensions in your google chrome or uh, do not use uh, uh, these uh, what I, I have i have seen uh, that there was an intern and um, uh, she she was really a smart worker there is no doubt in that uh, you know what she used to do she used to like uh, if you had to type anything or uh, something like that uh, uh, our senior used to give the dictation uh, she used to she used to take it very roughly and uh, then what used to she, what she used to do is like she used to uh, do that text to uh, sorry speech to text and she used to just tell that and uh, these uh, apps would uh, automatically convert it into type form so she was like yeah see how quick my work is done and uh, i'm that i'm this etc etc but that, that's a smart way of working i i totally agree with that i'm i'm not at all against it but in the meantime you should not be losing your skills on typing that's a very important thing as uh, being an advocate being a law student i still remember the first interview of mine which was uh, in the year 2015 that was uh, 2015 july somewhere uh, i attended my first interview uh, as a law law student uh, then they one of the interview rounds was uh, checking the typing speed so they had given certain uh, material and uh, they asked us to type and how good we are at typing and they had their uh, some specific software I, I do not remember that software what it was and uh, that was like um, uh, it was so well designed that it uh, if if i had typed any backspace by mistake if i had done it you were that it was showing that this fellow has typed the backspace number of backspaces typed number of the deletes uh, deletes typed deletes used and uh, uh, gap between the words from which word which word i had highest gaps so all of those things were there okay and also it was like sometimes what we do is like we do punctuation at the end we just keep on typing the paragraphing and others we do at the end even it was showing that that when did i do the paragraphing so that is very important in, in many of the law firms they do this sometimes what they do is like they may not do it on an uh, evident in front like to the face they will not show you that they are testing your typing skill but they would do it in a different way okay so so uh, so speaking all of that uh, let me show you how exactly quill boot works so here let me take one one sentence okay okay so i'll take this sentence key reports made by uh, various independent organizations reflect strike gap between the uh, purpose numbers and real numbers okay so i'm going to paraphrase this yeah so you can see that important assessments issued by numerous independent groups reveal a glaring discrepancy between the reported and actual statistics okay so they have totally rewritten the sentence now i have copied it from google uh, forget it but if i want to if i have written something and if i feel that no there is no appealing words in this or it feels like very lame it it feels like uh, uh, something which is which is not having that extra uh, uh, creativity in it then you can use these tools they will do the ai writing for you and you can have this uh, very easily and here you have the standard you have this fluency so here when you come to fluency it will be like simple okay so it is like uh, it is readable and free of errors so standard is something which is which is little complex and which will have some uh, some more words on this and here you have this formal simple creative expand shorten um, these will help you to uh, what i could say uh, uh, do it in, a, in that manner and these are the paid versions so i i never felt the need of having a paid version you are good to go with the, the free version of standard and fluency like that we have many uh, websites uh, like copy ai uh, that will help you to write the templates uh, sorry that will help you to write the emails without any errors without any mistakes 
so you can uh, have a quick email uh, done and very professional email which which will not have so much of um, uh, drama or, or or other of those things and it will be looking like yes how professionally she has written and and that will actually help you to oh, uh, skill up your professional skills professionals and also the communication skill set or all your networking skill sets too but the thing is you should not be uh, used to it okay you have to use it you have to use these things as a learning tool but not being dependent on it the moment you get dependent on it you become handicapped and the entire purpose of you learning or you doing things independent will be hampered so these are the few research technique skills and article writing skills which i wanted to uh, share with you so that you can be a good writer because everybody here are i know you are good at your languages and you can you have written so many articles also i i do believe and being a law student or being an advocate you can never ever escape from writing it is something which is um, uh, which is written in us we cannot escape <laughs> ourselves from its clutches i would rather say i heard clutches uh, so these are the simple things which i think uh, the uh, experience teaches you or your own learning teaches you yeah so this is this will make your research work good but do not be dependent totally on it the tools whatever i said i'm pressing it out again because that will be a very difficult uh, point and if you have to come over it then it will be very difficult okay and you never know sometime what happens is many of the uh, offices they block these kind of websites they'll be like no you cannot use that you cannot use this so at that point of time if you ever work in such companies then again it will be very difficult because you will not be able to open that website and uh, uh, these uh, things like grammarly and others they are also uh, restricted by many of the companies because of the uh data sharing policies and other things wherein they feel that yes this is a confidential piece of information and this should not be shared or this should not be compromised with any of them so yeah you will you will face such kind of scenarios because advocates are something like we always have something or the other confidential so yeah so and also as i said uh, uh, re, uh, uh concluding again use google scholar do not totally rely on the information that is available in the website uh, it may be google microsoft bing or um, what it is in any search engine for that matter do not rely on information that you get in a blind manner and uh, use uh, platforms like google books to get free book access and other uh, facilities even preview helps a lot uh, for example for your <laughs> literature review bibliography or uh, thesis footnotes or ma many many other places and um, yeah i'm followed by next one was um, writing the article skeletoning it that is more important you have to write a very good thing and also all the informations like the citation case number uh, 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 section numbers or article numbers or uh, year of the case whatever you are referring has to be very precise has to be very clear it has to be mentioned so that there is uh, no changes or something like that okay yeah so this is all what i wanted to cover about research and uh, the last one was using of tools like quillboot grammarly and other things use it very wisely do not be dependent on them do not be handicapped you you should be able to work independently also use them as the learning tool to enhance your vocabulary and enhance your writing skills yeah so yeah let me know if you have any questions let me go through the chat box uh, sorry ma'am network problem yeah no problem basuraj i will uh, share the recorded session so that you can go through it yeah any any questions or any difficulties that you have uh, faced in your research work yeah charu 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Okay, so ma'am, I had just this one question in my mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Since I am a fresher in the field of law, so where uh, can I actually publish my work? Like if I'm writing an article, unless and until it is not an internship, which, uh, you know, like something like um, um, a bad advocate or something, which gives me an opportunity to publish, usually my articles get rejected. Mm -hmm. like i have got four articles published uh, via just corpus but apart from that uh, when i send it for uh, newsletters or for uh, like uh, the blogs of colleges they mm -hmm. usually come back uh, us either i don't get a reply or they come back as rejected and uh, they don't give a, you know uh, proper stuff keep what was missing in my article that is why it got rejected rejected so mm -hmm. i wanted to know which uh, sites or which pages should i you know post them mm -hmm. yeah so here what i would uh, uh, suggest you is the first thing is uh, understand the reason why it is being rejected it may be the plagiarism thing uh, that is like uh, many of the colleges they use this uh, very weird app called as i don't know this is a recorded session i should be telling this or not called turn it in app I, that app is so strong i tell you that is like it is uh, it will dig out from every corner of the internet like however you have reframed the sentences however original you had tried to make it look like it will be like it is so strong and it will either show the contents as flagged or it will show the contents as uh, uh, plagiarized so you have to check if it is a plagiarized issue. So while you are sending, are you doing the plagiarism check? And also, if you are doing plagiarism check in a free uh, website, like plagiarism detector, detector, and there are, there are a few more which do the plagiarism check. Ensure that you do the plagiarism check at least in two websites. Turnitin also, we have uh, uh, the access. That's a, for master access. I think it is quite costly. So uh, you can find uh, uh, many mediated websites wherein they have taken the Turnitin access and they give you the plagiarism check done because the uh, publications, they are very careful with the plagiarism thing. So the first thing you have to work on is the detention of plagiarism. Though you have mentioned it in the footnotes, uh, people don't accept they'll be like just because it is written in the footnote it is acknowledged you cannot write the same thing that will not be a research work so many of the people uh, uh, may, uh, many of the editors or uh, the reviewers they do believe that because i know they would be the very senior persons and they will not compromise on this they like yes we want 100 percent original thing and even that for that matter even in the turn it in app even though you have given it in the footnote instead of that fact it will show it as plagiarized so it may be a scene wherein they are uh, uploading it in any of the plagiarism uh, thing and they are finding some plagiarized content that is the first thing and uh, the second one here is uh, uh, the topic so if you are writing something on ipr you have to look in for websites or you have to look in for journals who publish exclusively in ipr or uh, sometimes uh, if it is related to constitutional, you have to look in for those kind of people wherein they are interested in it. And also it should not be a general topic. See, at the end of the day, what they want is they want the people to read it. So if it is very general topic or a topic that has been researched by many of the people, they would not be uh, interested in publishing. They'll be like, hey, this topic everybody writes. Now, suppose if you today write a book on uh, uh, Indian Contract Act, we are like, hey, we have Avatar Singh, we don't want anybody. We are not ready to accept. There is a big no acceptance, both from the teaching community and the student community. We are very happy with Avatar Singh. In the same way, if you write a book on uh, competition law, everybody will be like, oh, okay, okay, there is a book by Charu on competition law, and I'm going to purchase it, I'm going to read this. Because those are the less explored areas of law and wherein people, students, teachers are eagerly looking out for some material. It can be your uh, uh, blue collar crimes or white collar crimes, subjects like that, they are least explored. So choose a topic very wisely on that. 
And uh, the third one is uh, ask for proofreading. It can be your uh, teachers, it can be your friends too. Many a time what happens is, even, even that happens with me. Uh, I would be, when I am reading certain things, I feel that, yeah, this is very much correct. I'm the same thing. I will read it after two or three days. Then I'll realize, oh my God, such a mistake I have done here. There is so much of errors, etc., etc. Because when we have written it in person, we know in our subconscious mind that what we have written. So even if there are errors in front of our eyes, we will not be able to recognize it because of our subconscious mind. So for that purpose, you have to get it proofread by your friends or by your teachers or if you know someone who can help you with that. And there are many people who uh, are very happy to do the proofreading uh, free of cost. Uh, just uh, uh, in return of that, they would be asking you uh, in the uh, name of uh, in, in the place of acknowledgement, please do add my name that I have done the proofreading or uh, uh, in the uh, or uh, somewhere in the article mentioned that proof read by this person do not add their name as the author keep the authorship with you but they will like yeah uh, add my name as the proofreader i will be very happy with, with that and they would be giving you uh, i'm sure they will be giving you a lot of uh, good content a lot of good weightage to your article so i think these ways you can come up with that and do not uh, feel bad about the rejections. The one thing that I have learned uh, in my eight years of professional life in law is whatever I see at the ads that are posted uh, related to vacancies or related to publications, they are all not genuine. They may be genuine, but there are cases wherein they are not genuine too. That is because that forms a part of digital marketing strategy. So when we started with IAPS India, I was not uh, not having any clue about this. I Then some day our uh, website content person, he came and he's like, why can't we post some ads that we have these vacancies? And I'm like, no, we don't have any vacancy as of now. And he's like, no, no, that's a part of digital marketing strategy. We have to post it so that people would be applying and we would be getting some engagements. People would be reaching out to us. They'll be visiting our website. They'll be checking our reviews and all of those things. And I said, oh, does it really work that way? He's like, yeah, every company does that. What do you think? All the job ads are genuine job ads. That is a time that kicked my mind. I'm like, okay, so this thing happens. So that that's a part of digital marketing strategy. They would not be uh, having the uh, need for the publication or they would be in no plan of releasing the edition, anything, but they would be doing it as part of um, the social media strategy as the engagement thing and all, all other things. See, that even, even that happens for that matter. So do not uh, feel so sad about the rejections that you get. It's okay. And also, uh, uh try exploring various uh, pages various platforms and also see uh, with the uh, you can find for example uh, me i do have a, a newsletter in linkedin wherein uh, there are around 4000 subscribers and also it uh, goes to uh, it reaches to around uh, the uh, reading of around yeah i have around 8000 followers on linkedin so you can uh, reach people, reach out to people like me and you can tell them that, see, you have a, a newsletter. I want to uh, contribute to a new, to the newsletter and uh, please do add my name in the credits that I have written this article. Instead of that, I'll give you the return. Uh, I will be giving you the article. So that way what happens is um, you will be reaching out to those many people. Now, suppose if you have a thousand connections in LinkedIn or two thousand connections in LinkedIn, and you are reaching out to a person who has uh, ten thousand connections in LinkedIn, so that way automatically you are reaching to around twelve thousand people out of uh, these many people's in LinkedIn, and you can you can find it. You can reach out to uh, these many people's, and they would be coming up with you. And uh, after I started writing the um, uh, newsletter, I have been approached by many people uh, who would be like, uh, 
yeah we will pay you uh, like these many uh, thing for the uh, writing the article can you write this article for our website can you do that can you do this so i have got a lot of um, the content writing thing so even that that would be helpful for you even if you cannot uh, like open with a blog or something like that then you can uh, leverage these platforms even uh, uh, insta or even facebook for that matter is really helpful in this thank you ma'am it actually really helped me um, in understanding how the process works yeah. uh, can i get your linkedin id i would love to connect with you on linkedin yeah yeah sure sure i'll share that i'll okay. share thank once you, this class is done yeah okay so how to start career in legal research so if you are very keen in the legal research then i would suggest you to work under some judges that would be a eye opening thing you would learn a lot under the judges they would be giving you a lot of research work that you will be tired of research work start with an internship and then you can uh, apply for the job vacancies and uh, you can you can be a if you if you are a person who is dying to do legal research then that is the job for you you will have a lot of things to learn a lot of things to explore yeah i hope i answered your question tejal uh, apart from that if not under judges then you have uh, you can be uh, the researcher for uh, ngos they would be uh, asking uh, you for this uh, social kind of things where like things like we lead and other things they have this they have they always have openings for legal uh, researcher and even in uh, uh, this one what is that mm. a national law school sign many many people were in they do this uh, legislations right now suppose they want to have a legislation today there will be a group of people who are working on that that would be something they would be giving the draft and other things uh, for that is to be passed in the parliament so you can um, uh, uh, you have to do like that okay yeah maltesh i think i have replied to you via email if i have not replied i will i will check that okay okay yeah yeah i think i replied you uh, i reviewed your article i will i will recheck it okay okay yeah so any any more questions yeah okay i think uh, we are good to wind up um, thank you for attending on your holiday i know how much it means for law students <laughs> i do understand yeah we'll uh, meet up and uh, i think we have one more session left uh, we'll meet up over there and uh, uh, and uh, i'll be sharing this recording in in some time because it takes a lot of time to upload and uh, once it is done yeah i will i will share that and meanwhile i'll share the uh, my linkedin profile also and i hope you had a great learning ha huh, and uh, yeah and one more thing before winding up i wanted to tell you uh, tell to the 17 people and uh, yeah so if you uh, i believe this session was good if it was so uh, please do share me a brief write up because uh, every after every session i do post a brief write up of the session that i conducted in linkedin so uh, this time i want you to write that and i am not asking you to post it in linkedin you do share with me in the whatsapp and i will copy that and i'll paste it in linkedin and i'll surely give you the credits if you wish to so this way i want to understand how much you have listened and how much you have learned from my session uh, that would be great if you could do it yeah Okay so happy holidays everyone merry christmas and uh, happy new year to everyone we'll meet up in the next session maybe in 2023 thank you ma'am thank you ma'am yeah thank you